Hi, my name is Javier Gonzalez, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to play the game Deal or Scam. So, first, there are two types of players. There are the sellers and the buyers. There's always going to be two, at least two sellers on the game, and the amount of buyers depends on the amount of players you're playing with. If you're six, there are going to be four buyers and two, and two sellers. Now, the sellers are going to be either the scammer or the deal maker. They are both trying to sell as many product cards as they can by auctions. The buyers, on the other hand, as the name states it, they are going to buy as many products as they can get. But the catch is that they don't know who the scammer or the deal maker is. They just know they're sellers. Now, each seller is going to get five product cards. During auctions, they have each to put one product to sale. And at the bottom of the card, you can see the base price of the product. That's going to also be the value at the end of the game for each product. Besides the product cards, the sellers also get the crypto cards that are going to tell a quality, either good or bad, about the product. Depending on if it's good or bad, each card is going to increase or decrease the value and the base price of the products. Now, each buyer is going to get eight money cards, and with this is what they're going to make bets with during auctions, and they're going to buy the products. Now, mixed with the money cards are the sale cards that are actions they can take after they win an auction. They can either affect the price they're gonna pay for the product, they can give them a product for free, or they can, at the end of the game, when the identities for those sellers are revealed, they can make them get a refund for a product they don't want anymore. And last but not least, each buyer gets a pad. At the beginning of the game, Sellers must decide who's the seller one and who's the seller two. With the pad, buyers are going to keep track of who they bought a product from. If they bought it from seller one or if they bought, bought it from seller two. Because they don't know who the scammer or the deal maker is. This is going to help keep track of who they bought it from. And at the end of the game, when the identities are revealed, they can see if they bought a product from the scammer or if they bought a product from the deal maker. Now let's look at the game with some more detail. To get the game started, place the money, descriptor, sale, and product cards at the center of the play area. Randomly deal out the roll cards to the, all the players. And now that you determine who the sellers and the buyers are, the sellers sit on one side of the table, the buyers on the other. Each seller identifies themselves as seller number one and seller number two. After the rolls are given, the sellers pick up five product cards and six descriptor cards. The buyers pick up eight money cards and get one pad to identify who they got their products from. If a buyer does not like what, the, what cards they got, they can draw as many cards as they want to change from the ones in their hand. This can only be done at the beginning of the game. In each round, both sellers are going to start an auction. They are both trying to sell a product at the same time. Each seller looks at the product cards they got and select one to put in auction. Afterwards, they select one descriptor card that will say a quality, either good or bad. And depending on what they choose, the price of the product will increase or decrease. Each seller places their product card and descriptor card on the table to start the auction. The buyers will take turns to make bets. If it's the first round, the first buyer to the left of the sellers starts their turn, and then they go clockwise. At the beginning of each turn, the buyers need to have a maximum of 8 money cards. If a buyer has less than 8 cards, they can draw 2 from the pile. Afterwards, if there is not a bet already, the player with the first turn starts the auction by increasing or matching the base price of a product. If there is a bet made, the buyer can either match it and increasing using a maximum of two cards, or they can step down. If there is no other buyer that can increase your bet, the player that made the highest bet wins the auction. Players are not allowed to just match the highest bet. 
in order to get the product, they have to increase the bet. When someone wins an auction, the sellers have a chance to convince the winner which product they should keep. Both the scammer and the deal maker are allowed to play up to two descriptor cards that will modify the actual value of the product. When the buyer makes a decision of which product to keep, they have two options. One, they use a sale card they have to modify the money they're going to pay. Or if they don't have a sale card or they already played it, they give the money to the seller and keep both the product card and the descriptor card that modified it. Afterwards, the seller that did not sell a product during the auction discards the pro that product and picks up new a new product card. And both sellers have to pick three descriptor cards more to get back to six descriptor cards on their hand. Now the sellers place the next product and descriptor card to start the next auction. The, the buyer who won the previous auction has the first turn in this round. This process repeats until one of the sellers runs out of all the product cards they have on their hand. Now, how do you win? There are two ways to win. Once one of the sellers run out of cards, the sellers must reveal if they are the deal maker or the scammer, respectively. Now, for the buyers, according to who they got the products from, the players are going to add or subtract the value of their products. If they have a product from the scammer, they have to subtract the total value of each product, including the descriptor card from each product. If they have product from the deal maker, they have to add the total value of each product, including the descriptor cards as well. The buyer with the highest valued products wins the game. Now for the sellers, the seller who got the most amount of money wins the game.